Hello guys, and welcome to another Top 10, where today we are going to discuss the underrated fire types. The fire type is probably a personal favorite of mine, if only because it has some of my favorite designs. Volcarona, Blacephalon, and Serilege are all Pokemon that come to mind when I think of the fire type. And Serilege itself just makes me more excited for Pokemon Horizons. Fire types are known mostly for their offensive capabilities, as defensively, they typically aren't all that great. Of course, it's not that they have no defensive capability at all, but it isn't the first thing that comes to mind. What does come to mind is taking a fire blast and then melting whatever is in your way. Now, as per usual, my rules for underrating are pretty simple. One, this Pokemon isn't seen in a competitive match very much. Either there are more popular options or the Pokemon just hasn't found its niche yet, assuming it could have one at all. Two, this Pokemon does not have as much of a following as other Pokemon of their type. They just aren't as popular, even though they probably could be if people realize their merits. Three, because all lists are subjective and personal opinion, they have to be Pokemon I deem to, simply put, just don't see at all. Not in competition, not as a design, not even in casual Pokemon chat. People simply just don't talk about it enough. Oh, and before we begin, because I've absolutely been loving the feedback on these videos and the input you all have given, I would like to do two things. Firstly, I want to give a personal apology to Alone Executor and Hisui and Gudra. I didn't mean to not bring them up in two of my underrated videos. I'll do better for these two next time. Secondly, in this Strongest Evo video, I noticed a few Pokemon were brought up that I'll quickly talk about, one of which being a fire type, so it's not too off topic. So bear with me, Rose Raid came up. And don't get me wrong, I really like Rose Raid, but it didn't have the same meta impact others on the list had. Clefable also came up in a few comments. And yeah, you got me on that one. I should have had that one on the list. Clefable has been really good throughout OU's history in Gen 4 and 6 through 8. I'd probably put it above Ninetales in hindsight. Lastly, Arcanine didn't make the cut because, don't get me wrong, it's good and has been good in doubles too before Incineroar showed up to take its place. Currently in Gen 9 VGC, seems to be doing pretty good though, so props to it. The issue with Arcanine is that it's been more niche throughout its history and hasn't stacked up to most of the Pokemon on the top 10 list. Those three were the main ones, but there were other good choices too. I figured I'd bring this up because I like interacting with you guys, and I'll respond to the comments you guys put out. Except I wanted to do it more vocally this time. And also comment what type you want to see done next. The suggestion with the most likes will be the next type I cover. So anyway, with that said, let's begin. So this is one of the times I get to cover a more competitively viable Pokemon. Armourouge has seen a bit of usage alongside Ndidi in Psychic Terrain plus Trick Room teams in VGC, and it's also seen a decent bit of usage in competitive singles, having a decent stint in OU for a while when people were using it, Ndidi, and Poltegeist to pop off on Psychic Terrain teams. Expanding force in stored power can change a person's worldview it would seem. Why do I feel Armourouge is underrated despite all this? Well, to keep it short and simple, the sheer existence of Serilege. Serilege has always been regarded as the cooler one, as it sees more usage in singles, and it seems like this dude uses one in Pokemon Horizons, which you all should watch by the way, myself included. I haven't caught up yet, but the screenshots look pretty sick. For once, the love for a Pokemon in competitive didn't seem to translate to love anywhere else, and I can't help but feel bad for it. Who knows though? Maybe Sarah Ludge will show up in Pokemon Horizons and play an important role. Surely, right? So I should start this off by explaining that, as it would turn out, there are not very many fire types in Pokemon. Something Pokemon has always had to deal with was the lack of catchable fire types, with some games having a wider selection to choose from than others. So with that said, it's safe to say that almost not a single soul could probably say they used Houndour and Houndoom in their Johto playthroughs, since you can't grab it until after you beat Lance. So. Why is it underrated? Well, despite even getting a Mega Evolution in Generation 6 and 7, that definitely made it an absolutely nuclear threat in Sun with access to solar power and Nasty Plot and also higher speed than Charizard, 
its fragility got it overshadowed because it was harder to make use of. And after Gen 7 and Houndoom lost its Mega, it became permanently overshadowed. I'm sure there are plenty of Houndoom fans, but for most people, due to the competition it has, it won't be many people's personal favorite. I really wish they didn't rob Chandelure out of Shadow Tag in Gen 5. Don't get me wrong, Infiltrator is great, especially with Reflect, Light Screen, and Aurora Veil occasionally popping up in competitive matches. However, it just wasn't Shadow Tag, which would have made Chandelure hilariously broken. Now, I know what you're thinking. How is Chandelure underrated? And you know what? I love Chandelure. I think it's underrated in a sense that, despite having amazing attributes like really solid coverage, decent typing, three decent abilities, and a decent bit of sets it can run, not to mention a gargantuan special attack stat, it won't be seen as much due to it being hard to use thanks to its below average speed, and Choice Scarf being dangerous to run at times. Regardless, I do love Chandelure, even if being around it puts my soul in mortal danger. Now, this one felt weird to put here, because I'm not sure if it truly belongs or not. But I looked at this Pokemon and I asked myself an important question. Why is Paldean Tauros Firebreed not used more in Gen 9? It currently rests in UU, which, don't get me wrong, is pretty good. But I feel it could definitely find a very slight niche in OU with enough work. Now, before I go through this, I say very slight because it is in UU and not OU for a good reason. It has its high highs and low lows. It has Intimidate and Will-O-Wisp, which allow it to cripple powerful physical attackers, like off the top of my head, Roaring Moon and Meowskarata. And it has fire and fighting stabs to potentially do well against popular steals. Goldango doesn't want to come in on your fire move, and King Gamut's Supreme Overlord stops being tough when Intimidate, Will-O-Wisp, and Body Press make it reconsider its life choices. Being able to intimidate a plus one Bax Caliber to mitigate a threatening Dragon Dance is also nice, even if it is immune to burn. I believe it has issues that can be worked around, albeit it will be hard. The ghost types of OU, like Dragapult, Goldango, Serraledge, and Skeledurge can force it out. And the physically defensive mons like Dondozo, Great Tusk, Garganical, and some variants of Rotom Wash compete with it and can beat it 1v1. So I don't think it can be an OU staple, but I think out of all three Paldean Tauros, this one is the best one. I think it has good matchups versus a decent bit of the OU tier, but I also have to admit its bad matchups are horrendous. Walking Wake is admittedly very good and beats Paldea and Tauros pretty badly. You know what? Maybe it being niche is fine because even if it has some bad OU matchups, I remember it being able to do something not very much else could do, and that's switching the Chi and Pal before it got banned. We'll take our victories where we can. Just make sure to not leave it in versus Toxapex, when you'd rather have it fight Amoongus. So this is where I will actually talk about competition and the Pokemon's moves and all that. Because this is a Pokemon I find to be genuinely usable. And in my opinion, it's the Firestarter that people give the least love to. So it deserves to be on this list. Funny enough, Embor used to be very good in black and white speedruns, but the weight effect for when it lands on the ground costed too much residual time wasted then stacked up. So it got replaced by Stoutland. Now, with that said, I think that not only is the beefy fire pig a cool design, and I think it's a very imposing Pokemon, odds are it's probably gonna run Choice Scarf. But having access to Head Smash, Flare Blitz, and Wild Charge all boosted up by Reckless's 20% power increase, and this is already coming off of a 123 base attack stat. But just because Choice Scarf is probably the standard doesn't mean you have to run it. Access to Taunt makes it a solid wall breaker. Its low speed and hammer arm could give it viability in Trick Room. It gets Sucker Punch for priority, Earthquake and Stone Edge make good coverage, and if you're really feeling yourself, you can play Grass Knot with your base 100 special attack and do some trolling on the Quagsire that thought they could wall you. Definitely a lower tier hero, 
but it deserves some respect. I think why people don't like him is rooted in the fact that Infernape and Blaziken came first, and there is reasonable firefighting fatigue. Okay, Colossal is a Pokemon I distinctly remember having a role in Sword and Shield VGC. I believe Steam Engine turned it into an offensive threat because it had a decent enough Gigantamax form, and it got even better if you hit it with the fire move, which it happened to quad resist, and now its speed has been raised three stages. While I don't quite remember how good it was at what it did, I do remember that it was used. And so, I want to take a moment to appreciate that much, since my VGC knowledge is limited. I think it's simply cool that a Pokemon with the typing as, in my opinion, pretty bad, has managed to make a name for itself in a metagame as typically fast-paced as VGC. Despite the quad weakness to ground and water, and the fear of any decent fighting move, it's managed to make a small name for itself, which is something I didn't expect when it came out. I also happen to really like the fact that it's just a giant lump of coal. I also appreciate that it doesn't like mines being vandalized. Although, admittedly, it could take a better approach to protecting the mines than, I don't know, incineration? It will spout flames of up to 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. At least try talking this situation out first, man. Scorch. Am I right? the only other bug in fire type. But unfortunately, it simply just isn't Volcarona. But it also doesn't have to be Volcarona. It has plenty of useful tools that Volcarona doesn't, and that causes it to somewhat come into its own as a Pokemon. By no means is it as good as Volcarona, as the Fire Moth is just built different. But a base 115 attack, solid HP, and special bulk, coil to fix up its physical bulk, leech seed for recovery, knock off for removing an item, and access to power whip, lunge, and fire lash for simple good moves makes it quite the menacing Pokemon if played right. What really holds it back is that it's slow, and it's forced to use heavy duty boots if it doesn't want to lose the stealth rock. Flash Fire and Flame Buddy are also very good abilities, so it isn't lacking there either. I think that it brings a lot to the table as a design too, as it's one of the reasons I'm glad that Pokemon aren't real. I'd rather not ever have to stare down a 9 foot 10 Fire Centipede that lashes out with fire over 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, and also has sharp claws and fangs. No thank you. The only chlorophyll sweeper in this entire vid. And thank goodness, because the grass type video made me realize how many of that type just had that ability slapped onto. Scovillain is a Pokemon I find to be incredibly underutilized. It's a fire type Pokemon with chlorophyll, and is the only Pokemon of its type. And yet, it's not used whatsoever on Sun Teams. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't get it. It has 108 in both attacking stats, which isn't as high as you want it. And then it's also frail and weak to Stealth Rock. The only thing it has going for it is that 108 is still one of the higher special attack stats put on a Chlorophyll Sweeper. And Stab Fire with double speed in the sun and potentially Terrestrialization to boost your power even further is hard to turn away from. Now, with that said, there is one other issue that deserves to be brought up. It has zero decent special coverage options. Stomping Tantrum, Crunch, and Zen Headbutt work for physical coverage. But if you play physical, you don't get to use Solar Beam, Fire Blast, and Overheat. If you play mixed, it would take a lot of fine tuning to make it work. Now, growth helps with the issue, but the issue with growth is that you leave yourself open to getting hit, and that's bad for Scovillain. This Pokemon isn't bad, but it's one of those Pokemon that is very hard to use, and it needs an expert Sun player to bring out its full potential. Heatmore is a Pokemon that feels both underrated and forgotten, and it honestly got the short end of the stick in every single regard. The only place I remember being able to encounter it off the top of my head is Unova Victory Road, which is way too late in the game for me to want to use it on my team, but it doesn't have a particularly impressive pull of stats. It's slow, frail, and with a middling 105 special attack to compensate. Its coverage is also really bad, and I had to look up whether or not it was in the Sword and Shield Pokedex. 
because I didn't really remember whether or not they put it in with Durant. So why is it underrated? We know why it's forgotten, as it clearly has the state and encounter location of Pokedex filler. Firstly, at least in canon, it can handle Durant, who I've touted as being pretty tough to deal with. Now, how well does this actually hold up in battle? I mean, I imagine Hustle Boosted Dig would remove it from the game. Secondly, I think it's just a cool looking mod. We don't get Anteater Pokemon very often, and while they aren't too similar, I can't help but think of Pyro from Team Fortress 2, although Magmortar is much more fitting of the name and role. Thirdly, all things considered, it's pretty neat, because White Smoke as an ability means that if I'm ever out of repels, wild Pokemon are less likely to appear with it in front of the party. It's a real shame that they made that its hidden ability. Yikes. Does anyone else here find Turtonator to be oddly versatile? Nah, I'm serious. It has access to Shell Smash, of course, but that's obvious. Access to Taunt, Body Press with the base 135 defense, 60 HP, and 85 special defense is solid bulk to go along with it. That 91 special attack can also make use of Shell Smash, although 35 speed does kind of stop it from being too good at it. You can play a Shell Trap set to bait and punish. You get Draco Meteor for Amazing Dragon Stab, and then with 78 attack, which is admittedly meh, you can mix it up even further with Curse or Bulk Up, and hit the opponent with a Nasty Outrage. It has a lot of coverage on both sides, and Fire and Dragon are a very useful type duo, along with it being pretty unique. It's the only one of that type, only sharing it with Mega Charizard X and then Reshiram, a legendary dragon who is a powerful engine of destruction. It's virtually invincible, very few have faced this awesome creature and lived to tell the tale. But Turtonator itself is a highly unique Pokemon with a variety of stuff it can do, and it can run a few items too. I think it's a worthy placement for number one on this list. And that's it. These are the Pokemon I believe to be the top 10 most underrated fire types. Now, I'm sure that everyone has that one they deem to be the most underrated, and I'm open to hearing it. What are your opinions though? Did I miss a fire type? Should I have been more ironic and put Charizard on the list? because surely of all Pokemon, he would be on the list, right? Let me know in the comments below, and also comment what type you want to see done next. The suggestion with the most likes will be the next type I cover. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my content. With Scarlet and Violet DLC on the way, we have a lot to be excited for. Not just that though, but I've got a bunch of other cool series planned throughout the year that I'm sure you guys will love. If you want to support my other forms of content, over on Mystic Reads, I read fanfics. One of them right now is Road to be a Pokemon Master Kanto Edition, where Ash and Serena start from the very beginning and journey through Kanto together. On Mystic Umbreon Shorts, I do other exclusive Pokemon content such as Pokemon Facts, and on Saturdays, I upload my top 5 favorite Pokemon of a type. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent day.